so thanks for joining me. This is the second half of the October wrap up. Now I was real, real ambitious when I made this and I thought, oh yeah, it will be fine. Turns out it's like it was, it was a long video. So we're splitting it in half. These are going to be the books without pictures. I'm going to put all the books down below that I'm going to talk about. Um, and then I'm going to put timestamps so that you can just jump to the book that you're interested in or, you know, re listen to the whole thing. That would be swell. But, you know, we all live very busy lives. I get it. I get it, guys. I hope you like it. Let's get into it. The nonfiction book I read this month was Eat Sweat Play by Anna Kessel. This is a wonderfully accessible book about sport for women who just don't sport. It was great. The short story collection I read this month was Sweet Home by Cara Spray. I felt like the quality was pretty consistent throughout, it was really good, and the writing was just lovely. Finally we have the novels. First we have Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I really loved the premise of this as well as the twists and turns. It was it was a wild ride. It was awesome. Then we have The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. I really loved this one. It just like lost a star for the ending. But other than that... Mm. Finally, we have The Power by Naomi Alderman. Um, this is basically just my kind of book. So... I loved it. It was awesome. Um, yeah, it was pretty great. Remember timestamps down below. Let's get into them one by one. Okay, non-fiction. Let's do this. We've got Eat Sweat Play. This is a non-fiction exploration of women's relationship with sport and how we can change that. I first saw this book on Lena Norm's channel, I'll link to it below, and I knew I had to read it. It was just a matter of when. This book really got me to question my relationship with sport um, and how I went from, you know, a girl who did cartwheels and ran around with the boys to a woman who, like, loves to hate exercise. This book put into words some conflicting feelings I had about femininity and strength and how you can still exercise and call yourself a feminist. This book also fostered some really interesting discussions with my partner about gendered competitive sport and, you know, whether it should be about gender or anatomy or talent or hormones or chemistry or just, like, how... How do you categorize people? Um, it was really interesting, and you know we didn't come up with <laughs> we didn't come up with an answer by any means. I really liked the how accessible this book was. I felt like anybody anybody could read this. I feel like the second half just wasn't for me. I just couldn't connect as well to the second half of the book. Still really great, really interesting information. It wasn't preachy about exercise. It was just kind of pointed out some things. It was just like, hey, this is dumb. Let's fix this. You should read this, no matter what kind of bits you have or how you identify. Uh, whether you like sport or not, this has just got some really interesting points in it um, and I think everybody would benefit from reading it. Busts a lot of myths and I think would do a lot of good in breaking down some misconceptions. So if you're not quite sure yet what to pick up for non-fiction November, give, consider this one. It's a, it's a good one. Check it out. Check it out. If you like all of your books, have a listen. Next we have Sweet Home. Sweet Home is a collection of short stories centered around the theme of home and family. It was the perfect amount of creepy for me, a more kind of unsettling feeling than anything gory or gross. I've read Cara Spray's novel Theme of You and I really enjoyed it, so I was curious to see what she could do with this. I think it can be really hard for short story collections to maintain a high quality across every story. In this case, for me, most of the stories sat around four or five stars, which I thought was pretty impressive. I like maybe one or two. We're at the three star mark, but overall pretty, pretty good. I really enjoyed this book. I felt like the writing was really beautiful and it really was able to capture the essence of a child's thoughts or what they say or things like motherhood and, and guilt. Yeah, I think this would also be an interesting book to revisit as a parent because I think there might be some like extra little subtle things in there that would be interesting to read. The only thing I can think of that I didn't like about this book was that the narrative voices didn't always match the character. But this didn't bother me all that much because the writing was beautiful and I didn't really care if a 10 year old would actually know the word coriaceous or not. It just if you like short story collections, if you're into, you know, subtle folklore or fairy tale retellings, um, if you like creepy or unsettling sort of stories, pick this one up, pick this one up. I love this book so much that I bought my own copy, so definitely, definitely check it out. Next we have Dark Matter. This is a what if story. What if you had a do-over, you know, like what would you do differently and how would this change and what would be the cost? This book is better when you don't know too much 
because it's really about figuring out what's going on. So I'm not going to tell you all that much, but fun fact, I was listening to this one while playing Yonder and it was a really it's a good combo. It was a good combo. So I really loved this book. I thought it did a great job of keeping you guessing. And just when you think you have it figured out, there's an extra layer to it. I liked the characters and the plot. I thought it was really refreshing to hear about a man who chose family over career and what kind of impact this had. I thought it was really interesting. Um, the only thing I didn't like was the ending or like I should say that it ended. I just I wanted more and I didn't like the point at which it ended. I'm just greedy. This is what we're learning here. I'm just I'm greedy. So if you like science fiction but it's set in our world, you're gonna love this one. Um, it's fast paced but it, the characters don't suffer. They are real and tangible things and it's really good. Probably borrow, pro probably borrow this one, don't buy it. I personally am not gonna reread this one um, because I feel like I consumed it and it was awesome while it lasted. Next we have The Butcher's Hook. This is the story of Anne Jacob. She's living in the 1700s. Her father wants to marry her off, but actually she's in love with the butcher's boy. And then it gets really dark, <laughs> really dark really quickly. This book is told from her perspective and you really get inside her head and why she's making certain choices. I really, I thought this book was really clever and clever because I couldn't really pinpoint when my feelings towards the characters shifted and like who I was feeling sorry for at what time. It was so subtle and well integrated that I just, it felt so genuine. It felt so genuine. I really like the writing. Uh, London comes to life and you can just see and smell everything. I love the characters, the writing about the characters. One, one of the things I wasn't too keen on in this was the ending mainly because I feel like there was no like accountability for what happened, which kind of frustrated me because, you know, some pretty serious stuff goes down in this book. However, don't let that keep you from it because the rest of it is just, it's so good. If you love historical fiction or girls with brains and, you know, slightly twisted characters, then you are going to love this one. This one is your jam. I bought this one on Audible to listen to, but I also have it on my wish list for a physical copy. Yep, that's how much I love this book. Final book we have is The Power. Power is an exploration of an idea, you know, what if women suddenly were more physically powerful than men? What would the world look like? How would it change? What would be different? Matthew Sharapa recommended I get my teeth into this one. This one has won um, the Women's Prize for Fiction this year and I just realised how funny that is given the book's commentary on award-winning and categories. I really appreciated how far the author went with her idea. I felt like she really thought through all the little details. She didn't just explore the initial shift in power but also the impact that that had you know years years down the track and how that change would impact other things. It was just I felt it was really well thought out. To summarize the summary of the summary people are a problem in the wise words of Adams. I loved the plot development and the character development in this book. The book has multiple perspectives. There wasn't anyone that I was not interested in. I felt invested in all the characters and yeah, it was awesome. So the only thing I didn't like about this was the way that the ending was written. I felt like um, it tried to end like five, five times, just wrapping up all the characters and what's going on. Yeah, it just, it just reminded me of the Lord of the Rings, you know, Return of the King maybe. If you like dystopian books or gender theory or just want to know how we can take down the patriarchy, this is the book for you. I would totally buy this one. You might want to refer back to it and reflect on how we can, you know, save the world. Because it's just that awesome. Those were all the books that I read. <laughs> Those were all the books that I read in the month of October. Um, I feel like I had a really great reading month and I, you know, I'm, it was good. It was good. Um, and I'm looking forward to November and what November has to bring. I want to participate in non-fiction November, but, um, yeah, hang on, let me get my chibi red pile. Oh god, that's so heavy, that's so heavy. Look, okay, look, let's be real, this is what I probably should be reading in November <sighs> for non-fiction November. I could totally make them squeeze into the categories. I mean, this one is written in Australia, so we could call it home. Uh, this one is um, definitely scholarly. In fact, all of these fit under the scholarly category. I could also say what I love. Ooh, I love motor speech disorders. I'm very passionate about those. Um, also dysphagia. Also dysphagia. Um, I love 
Home, Cat, what was the other one? There was another, there was another prompt wasn't there. Mm, not sure, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head and because I film on my phone, can't look it up. Mm. So you're just gonna have to tell me what the last category was and if you can creatively make any of these fit into it. Um, look, I've already, I've already read some of them. You can see all the tabs, like I'm, you know, I'm part way through. I'm part way through, but that's really what my non-fiction November is going to look like, guys, because, you know, let's be real, student life. But I am really enjoying watching everyone else's non-fiction November and cheering on everybody who's doing NaNoWriMo because you guys are nuts in the best possible way and I hope you reach your goals because you are committed. Oh, I just burped and I talked and it was... I hope you enjoyed this wrap up, this style of wrap up, um, it was, it took a long time, don't think I'm gonna make this a regular thing because guys, it wasn't really a wrap up, there were kind of like 11 mini reviews there and I don't know, have you got time to be watching all this? I, I'm, I'm not sure, jury's out on this, I'm not sure. Um, probs gonna make them a lot snappier next time but also probs won't read 11 books next month because I normally read like three? Four? Maybe? That's like a book a week, that's insane. Um, don't forget to like comment down below what your thoughts and feelings are. I want to make this a two-way dialogue because, you know, otherwise it's just me sitting in a room by myself talking to my phone, which is a little bit creepy. Um, but, love you guys. You guys are the best. And I'm just like, I'm just, ah! And just so happy that, you know, there are people out there that like books, that I like books, and you know, we can talk about books together and it's just, this is a new concept for me, but I'm loving it. Loving it! Anyway, bye guys. Okay, I'm just gonna have to do this a little bit organically. Right. By <laughs> organically, do you mean <laughs> shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. Alright, what's the next one? <laughs> okay, so we're going into the liked part. Okay, liked. What did I like?